Welcome to Dairy Pod, a podcast series from Dairy Australia. Featuring a range of experts, each episode offers insights into Australia's unique dairy farming conditions, as well as personal experiences and the latest in dairy innovation. Please be aware that this episode contains themes that may be upsetting to some of our listeners. If this does raise personal issues for you, there is help. You can contact Lifeline on 13114 or visit the Beyond Blue website at beyondblue.org.au. You can also find other farmer support services on the National Centre for Farmer Health website at farmerhealth.org.au. Hi everyone, welcome to Dairy Pod and thanks for tuning in. I'm Mick Fuller, National People Lead at Dairy Australia. In this podcast series, we'll be hearing from some of our farmers who are out there driving positive change in farm safety and wellbeing, and I'll be talking with them on how they're approaching the challenge. Being innovative and adaptable, as farmers do, making their farms safer for the people working there, and ultimately lifting their safety culture. We hope by sharing their stories, they can inspire our listeners to do the same. We're really fortunate today to be joined by Rachel McGrath, who is one of our farm ambassadors based in Kuroit in West Vic. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm near Kuroit. I'm in a little, I suppose it's more of like a little region. <laughs> it's orphaned. There's no shop or nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, in between Co- uh, Kuroit and Port Ferry in southwest Victoria, um, I'm on a family farm, so it's uh, it's originally my dad's side of the family farm, and he was a sheep farmer gone dairy, and we milk at peak 400 cows, uh, predominantly split calving uh, through the autumn and spring, but uh, we have show cows, so there are some cows that sort of calve whenever that um, that might line up with the show as well. So I. Um, been working on my for 13 years now since I left school and in that I've been involved with the Jersey Breeders Club, Dairy Farm Ambassador for Dairy Australia and I'm one of the leaders with the YDM Leadership Coordinating Group. So yeah, I, I try and keep busy. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that's a that's a very full card. So um, that's that's great. I, I guess as I mentioned in the in the intro, you know, uh, around sort of you know farmer well being, and there, there's been a particularly a renewed focus on farmer well being in agriculture in recent times. Uh, we had a NFF uh, Norco undertake a, a survey last year, which pointed to some quite sort of alarming statistics relating to you know mental health issues and well being in our industry. Um, can I ask, how, how did you become interested in this particular area? Uh, we had a farm accident back on our farm in 2007. A fellow who was working for us very close with the family, um, basically a big brother to me, he rode out of a quad out of our driveway and was hit and killed. And I was about 12 at the time. My sister was 14. And my mum was first on the scene. So, you know, I think... Oh, I know, definitely something like that is very life-changing and sort of changes the way uh, you're affected, I guess. Um, sometimes I do think about like how things would be so different um, if that didn't happen. But, you know, it's, I suppose, to dairy, um, you, you still had to get up and go and milk the cows. So as much as like my parents were grieving and everything, uh, they were probably... They are the most strongest and resilient people that I know, and you know it's it's been tough for many years after that. And we uh, we sold the dairy there for a little bit, but decided to go back in more debt because we weren't making enough money and build another dairy. Um, so yeah, it's dairy's been very close to us and helped keep us going. And yeah, it's a uh, it's been a uh, wild ride through life i guess yeah yeah look uh, th- th- thanks for uh thanks for sharing with us something you know that so personal and and i guess you know even after this time it's still a really sort of sensitive topic um uh so appreciate that w- when we talk about words like sort of well-being and resilience it, it means different things to different people 
So when when you think of those things, given your past experiences, what what comes to mind for you? Um, resilience would be yeah, being able to tackle the hard days and, and keep going. But with the well being, like there was for such a long time, I just pretended. Well, not the bad pretended, but I was like, I can fix myself. I um, I would go really well for a little while and then things would like boil over like whether it was stuff going wrong on the farm and and I wouldn't really talk about my feelings too well and then I'd just come in and come into mum like we're a very close family which I'm very lucky and I I would just probably burst out crying and just reach the tipping point so with the the well-being it's um it's being able to I suppose handle and having a network better using the network like I've got a great network around me so I could be better with using them but um I think it's so important because also like farming dairy farming in particular you know there's a lot of hard days there's plenty of good days that outweigh them but you know some of those hard days you sort of think is there light at the end of the tunnel and um yeah so I only just recently saw well, well, I started counselling again and um, went to the doctor and got uh, medication to sort of help more so just to see a little bit of clear in those harder days. And it's actually the best I've felt in um, in such a long time, more consistently. Uh, it's not a heavy dose or anything like that, but um, I'm able to, you know, enjoy the days a bit more again and from such a long time I was like no I don't I don't need this I don't need this like that's weak um but then and then I was stuck in a thing where I was feeling like I was the broken one and stuff so basically I was like no this is what my body needs it needs a little bit of help um and so yeah it's I suppose getting away from yeah that stigma that poor mental health or um is weak and stuff uh yeah, <laughs> I finally bit the bullet, and um, it's it's been so much better. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a couple of questions come to mind just as you as you talk about that. And I guess the first one is, uh, you know, you, you had a life changing event uh, coming up to twenty years ago now. Um, uh, knowing what you know now, um, if if what, what, what would have you changed in terms of how you manage yourself and what you saw in others, particularly in family members? Because this had a, an obviously a, you know, a dramatic impact on lots of people, your family, um, uh, family and friends of, 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 the, uh, of the employee who you know, unfortunately died. Uh, what, what, in looking back, what, how would you manage things differently if if you could do that what have you learned what have i learned um i suppose yeah the the lack of knowledge around it uh at the time even mum said you know like we were sort of the first farm where an incident like this had happened so even she had a hard time getting good legal advice and stuff but um uh yeah i would have probably started counselling a bit earlier and being more active, I suppose, in probably speaking to my family and friends about it. I, I just remember, like, I, I had, I don't know, four to six weeks, well, it felt like it was probably less, but um, a lot of time off school. And when I went back, uh, it felt like, you know, it was business as usual, I guess, None of my friends really asked me about it. The school didn't come to me and provide me with counselling, which um, probably back then I would have had to go find it myself, whereas I feel like nowadays uh, there are a lot more forthcoming coming and probably would have put me into counselling straight up. Um, but, yeah, so I've, I would have, with my knowledge now, um, really pushed on counselling. My sister... She was on antidepressants basically straight away 
and I probably would have given in to <laughs> that maybe maybe earlier because I reckon I went to the doctors uh, between like yeah over the last nearly 20 years three times for it and was prescribed the antidepressants each time and I was like no I don't need this so the third time was the lucky that was when I actually decided to take them home and take them um yeah so basically yeah using my network around me a bit better communicating my feelings I s- would be a big thing um my parents are very approachable and great to chat with and the friends that I have now um, are really, really good and, you know, they know when I'm having a, a bad day and they're quite happy to um, have me chat about it. And the other day I said to my friend, oh, I feel like I just always have problems. She goes, no, no, that's life. She's like, here, you sit down and listen to my problems now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's great to have a, a network like that. And I, I think you're right. I think over the, over the last 20 years, you know, there's been steps forward. You know, in Australia, that uh, that mental health is uh, is a lot more sort of out there in the open to be discussed um, than it was back then. Um, it, it makes me think of a second question. You know, we talk about building resilience, and there's an element there of to build resilience. You know, um, do you, do you need to tough something out um, because that's that's historically how we've sort of viewed you know how you become more more resilient by having a lived experience but is it is there a point there where it's not about sort of toughing it out it's about actually seeking out support and and for you what 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 advice would you give to farmers with regards to where, when that point actually is um, and, and I know that you're not a professional counselor, n- nor am I, by the way. Um, but but in just in terms of your lived experience, wh- where what what practical advice would you offer with regards to when it's actually not about building resilience? It's about getting getting some help either from the network, from your network, or from um, or professionally. Yeah, um, like I wish I had done it so long ago. Uh, my sister would be the prime example is I watched her um, be on those antidepressants at such an early stage and um, it was and they're, they're not like they're not 100% going to work straight away I know for the first six weeks that I was on mine I was like oh Maureen Maureen's my sister um, Maureen I, was like, I don't know whether these are working I was like I feel tired and then I, um, I was like but the biggest thing is my anxiety is is a lot lower than what it would normally be but it probably took her really four years and obviously it was like at the height post-accident and all the legal proceedings that our family was going through and stuff so that's probably why it took longer but you know she's been my biggest support and told me all along like you know it's not weak to take the medication you know if it if it helps you and obviously yeah on a low dose it's not like i'm taking a tablet and just not feeling a thing sort of thing but um to see her come out the other side as she was yes an anxious mess and at times i was like oh you have a few screw loose the screws loose or something but um you know she is such a strong woman now and she does the books on the farm and the only thing she doesn't put cups on, actually, but she comes in house with everything else, and you know she's been like a real role model of resilience. Really, for me, is it wasn't a fact of yeah, let's push through it. Um, it'll get better on the other side. She she pushed through and managing her medication and looking after herself at such an early stage that now that she's two years older than me now and. She's got two beautiful kids and, you know, she's just such a great mum, such a great person and such a great network for me and support for me. Um, But, yeah, so I would I definitely say to someone that, you know, don't leave it, like, too long because some of the days for me, like, I didn't have suicidal thoughts or anything like that, but 
I was getting to a point where like nearly at 30 years of age wondering why I'm like why I am farming when it's so tough like you know like I do love it and I love the cows and um yeah that it's such a rewarding industry there's plenty of encouraging people in it but you know those days where I just I wasn't seeing those that light at the end of the tunnel and I was having days where I just didn't want to get out of bed and I'd be talking to Maureen and she'd be like you know it's really lucky that you're in dairy because you have to get out of bed to milk those cows. And I was like, I know it's the last thing I want to do. I don't want to do. Um, and yeah, feeling how I'm feeling now, more confidence in myself, confidence in decisions, and um, just that, yeah, that I'm happy to get out of bed again. Um, I'm wishing that I had have done it a whole lot earlier, really. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess what I'm picking up from this is a couple of things, um, j- just in, in summary, one is, uh, have an understanding that, that you're never alone, um, and that you can reach out to, to your network with that, with that be friends, family. Um, there's also the professional network of, of counsellors. And I know you've mentioned sort of medication at various points and, and maybe that's a consideration. Maybe it's in combination or, or uh, with, with, uh, with counselling or, or sort of some other, um, some other support mechanism. Um, uh, I, I take your point with regards to, you know, not, necessarily it's not necessarily a matter of toughening toughing it out but it's a matter of actually identifying in yourself and others when when you're not coping um, and seeking out that help early because seeking out that help early um, actually makes you stronger um, gives you that strength to to really build that resilience um, uh, I, I think in in closing, I, you know, I really want to thank you for for sharing yourself uh, um, and your experience today, uh, Rachel, um, and your perspective on on well being. Um, for anyone out there listening, uh, we will explore uh, other uh, areas uh, um, of farm safety and well being in in our podcast series. Um, but if anything we've covered today. Um, brings up particular concerns for you uh, we encourage you to seek, seek support from your GP um, from agencies such as Lifeline or Beyond Blue or Rural Aid um, uh, and the contact details will be included uh, in the episode notes attached to this podcast so Rachel in just closing um, anything else you'd like to close on with regards to this topic yeah um so what actually got it started is I was talking to my friend and um, I thought that this might be quite useful for other farmers that maybe don't have a lot of time to get off farm and seek that help is um, I found the, the Better Help app really useful. So that's where I chat to my counsellor and uh, we do a video call on there and um, that's been so handy because, you know, I can organize with her at a lunchtime break or something like that but I don't actually have to get off farm but I can still put that time away to help sort myself out and um, yeah tackle a few problems so I really suggest um, if anyone is thinking about it that having a look on that that app and there is a lot of a lot of counselors on there and you can if one's not suiting you you can swap them and yeah it's really useful. What, what what is that app again for the listeners, Rachel? Better help. Better better help. Okay, we'll put that in the um, in the episode notes as well. And you're right that uh, you know farmers are often time poor. It's hard to get off the farm sometimes. You know you may be in an area that that doesn't have uh, uh, great support, uh, professional support in the local area, and so telehealth in this area. Um, you know, does both those things. You can get access to the help that you need at a time that actually suits you. Um, and I think that's that's great advice. So once again, thanks a lot for your time today. And um, 
look forward to uh, next podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining today's Dairy Pod episode. We hope you found it enjoyable and insightful. For more information, check out the episode notes. You can stay up to date by following Dairy Pod on your favourite podcast platform. To get in touch, visit dairyaustralia.com.au. Until next time, take care.